Good afternoon, my name is Steve Brown. I was historian of the Red Wing Collector Society for 16 years. It has been my pleasure to be part of the first board of directors that created the museum that you see in front of you. I am very proud of it. I think it's an excellent addition to the community and it is my pleasure to share with you dinnerware, basically part two or the final dinnerware that was produced at Red Wing until the potteries closed in 1967. What you heard a little earlier was associated with my wife talking about the early dinnerware where an individual artist would do all brush strokes of a given piece. It was placed on a board or a plank and a new set of pieces were brought to that artist. One of the improvements that got made later in the production of dinnerware was actually more of an assembly line technique. That technique allowed for roughly five to 15 women to be in the ends of a conveyor belt, whereas they only needed one brush of one color and applied certain brush strokes to a given piece. If the piece was relatively simple, such as a cup or a saucer, only a few brush strokes were necessary, therefore, only a few women were necessary to complete that piece. However, there were certain pieces of the more complicated and colorful patterns, for instance, Tampico, that required up to 15 women to execute the dinner plates. To that end, visually, it would look something like this. You had women that are on either side of this conveyor belt. There was one woman feeding the conveyor on one end. Another woman was on the other side, checking for the completeness of pieces and assuring that it met quality standards and then would be sent to the kiln. By the time Red Wing had completed their dinnerware production, over 100 different hand-painted patterns were created. The sales room just across the street was a Midwest, if not of national interest. Women, soon to be married, would come with their mothers to pick their wedding china. Many times we're finding that daughters, granddaughters and families are acquiring these sets of dinnerware but know nothing about it. They come here in order to identify the pattern that got produced, when it was produced, and some of the pieces that they may not even knew existed in that pattern. It becomes very much a resource to the community and to the Midwest to bring people here to do that sort of identification, and we do it for free six days a week here at the Pottery Museum. The Red Wing Potteries had their 75th anniversary in 1953. In 1953, they produced a special shape of Red Wing dishes to commemorate the event. Known as the anniversary line, its key feature is the basket weave texture of the patterns that got produced. These were all hand painted. These were all well marketed nationally and received great reception in all of the art pottery and art pottery shows that were held in New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. This was very, with the curlicue tops, it was very much in vogue in the 1950s and sold very well and is found in antique shops and antique malls throughout the Midwest even today. As it relates to other patterns, they sold well, some didn't sell as well. For instance, this western pattern here receives a lot of ridicule in that it looks like a bad comic book image of western wear through and including women who will remark to me that they're tired of seeing a cowboy's butt as they're having coffee for breakfast. This pattern, however, is actively sought in today's market in states such as Montana, collectors from Utah, and basically the western states have really drawn an attraction to collecting this pattern. It is known as Roundup, also known as Chuck Wagon with two different variations. It was created in the late 1950s. By the late 1950s, Red Wing was an active player in those patterns that would now be called mid-century modern. 
as we look at some of these patterns, which includes a pattern known as crazy rhythm, which is based on an electric circuit board, or you're looking at these lunar lander feet that are applied to some of these pieces, you are clearly in the Art Nouveau, or I'm saying the mid-century modern type feel of dinnerware of the late 50s and the early 1960s. Picture yourself now that these are the types of dishes that would be on your table as Sputnik was launched or the early Gemini satellites, etc. We aren't quite to the moon yet, but we're in that early phase of the crazy er late 50s and early 1960s. The dinnerware production at Red Wing in the late 50s and through the 1960s reflected roughly 80 to 85 percent of the profits of the company. Although others may show you the art pottery of the given era, the majority of profits came from the hand-painted dishes and the volume sales of those dishes. Let's talk about those dishes for a moment. First of all, those dishes came out of the longest Harrup, H-A-R-R-U-P, tunnel kiln that was made in the United States. That Harrop tunnel kiln, upon completion of the firing sequence, the finished pieces were placed inside of these crates. They were not packed between paper. They were not really stacked in any other way than, other than being placed in these crates. These are original crates that haven't been touched from when the potteries closed in 1967. The way that you, the consumer, made sure that the popular patterns of hand-painted dinnerware got produced was both retailers and wholesalers would create orders. Those orders would be filled and these crates would become empty. That's how they were able to monitor not only their inventory, it monitored how well that hand-painted pattern sold. If the pattern didn't sell, it was soon discontinued. The marketplace was notified of discontinuance of that pattern and they would immediately, under the same shape, hand paint a different pattern that they were hopeful would be better received by the buying public. So we always knew what market share we had of any given pattern and that's why you will see throughout the dinnerware area the number of years that a given pattern was in production was based solely on how well it retail and wholesale sold in the day. By the mid-1960s, the Red Wing Potteries was seeking some relief from some of its costs of doing business and making of its wares. What you'll find in the mid-1960s is that hand painting had been eliminated and more of a stenciling approach or solid colors were used in an effort to cut costs of the product. There was a lot of foreign competition, whether it be domestic or international. To that end, in order to keep Red Wing competitive, their cost of doing business had to be reduced. Some of their cost cutting techniques included this stenciling or solid color dinnerware before it closed in 1967.